Hello and welcome to Executive Next Level. Uh, today, uh, again, lucky enough to be uh, joined here by Professor David Clutterbuck. Um, we have just finished, in fact, we're back in the hotel now um, following the Kuwaiti Coaching Conference. And uh, uh, Professor David has kindly uh, um, uh, agreed to uh, spend a couple of moments with us. And what I wanted to do was to, to aim this particular video blog at executive coaches in the Middle East. Um, and David's going to explain a little bit about uh, who he is um, because he's got extensive knowledge of coaching and mentoring uh, in Europe. And uh, I guess we're going to talk about how we can uh, um, go forward as coaches within the Middle East and some of the challenges that we may be facing. So uh, firstly, welcome, David, and right. uh, um, we'd love to hear some, something of, of yourself. Great. Well, I'm visiting professor at, co at two universities, at uh, Oxford Brooks and Sheffield Hallam, in the coaching mentoring faculty there. Um, and I was... Um, partly, at least partly responsible for bringing coaching and mentoring to Europe. Uh, I bought the uh, idea of structured mentoring programs to Europe in, in 1982 um, and conducted the first experiments with them. And I co-founded the European Mentoring and, co and Counseling, sorry, European Mentoring and Coaching Council. Uh, um, and uh, uh, so obviously, I mean, you're, <laughs> you're, you're an expert in this field and it's, it's great that we're able to talk to you. And in terms of your experience of coaching in the Middle East and how it's developed, sorry, coaching experience in Europe and how it's developing, um, w and obviously the challenges that we face here, what are some of the things that we need to be aware of as coaches here and um, uh, what are some of the solutions perhaps of, uh, to those uh, challenges? Well, the great thing is that, you, that because Europe is so, is so far advanced in, the, in this area, although it's only a very short time since coaching really started becoming, or developmental coaching started to be on the scene, but Europe is probably 10 years ahead. Um, um, and in fact, Europe's slightly somewhat ahead of the States as well, in, which is quite interesting in, in the use of some of the media and some of the, some of the approaches. But essentially what, what, what's, what's coming I, I, is a lot more attention to the quality of coaching. So anybody could put up shop uh, 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 to begin with, and, and a lot of people still do. Um, but what big employers are looking for, people are going to spend real money on coaching. They're looking for somebody who, who actually understands coaching at a deep level and can really operate with executives who in particular, um, adding some considerable value. Uh, and that means they've got to have a wide knowledge. They've got to be um, so properly supervised. Um, and so supervision doesn't mean having a buddy that you talk to occasionally. It means having a proper qualified supervisor to, to, to work with you and help you develop your practice and look at the ethicality of what you're doing and so forth. They need to understand boundaries, and that's part of what supervision help, helps you to do. But also they need continuous professional development. What was good three years ago is now only mediocre. So the boundaries are constantly moving, and coaches now have to invest conti continuously in their professional development. So all of that's happening at a real place in, in, in Europe. Um, and I think it, it's one of the great advantages is, is to be able to tap into that expertise and, 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 and not make some of the same mistakes that we've made in terms of, of, of for, for example, bickering between associations about coaching. Um, a lot of, a lot of the, the whole thing is about cooperation and, and, and working together. Great. And so um, a little bit of advice then for, for coaches here in the steps that they need to take in order to try and stay... Um, maybe not ahead, but uh, once uh, to at least keep moving forward at a considerable pace to make sure that we're at least aligned with what's going on in Europe. Well, one of the things is to have your own personal development plan as a coach um, um, and to have somebody who helps you to work through that. And that that's part of the ro role of a supervisor. Another thing is to, is to belong to one of the professional associations. Um, and it doesn't matter too much which a professional association is as long as it meets the kind of coaching that you want to do. So if you want to become a life coach, there are some, co some associations that are the best for that. If you want to, want to become one that's really focused on, on, on executive coaching and on delivering um, high, you know, high level results for people, transforming people's, the way people think, then, then, then other, other associations are more, more, are more appropriate for that. And I don't think it's appropriate for me to sort of stick labels on them at this stage, <laughs> but, okay. but, but I think it was probably clear where most, a lot of my sympathies lie. <laughs> um, uh, but but one of the things that we, we're recommending is that maybe we should be, we, sh we should be looking at linking w between the EMCC um, and help w w or, uh, and using the EMC's um, uh, ability to to help people el outside of the, of the th that region to grow their own associations, which are about mutual support, developing standards that work in the, in in this environment. Um, and so making making coaching a uh, and, and its associated co skill mentoring, making them very much a regionally adapted um, car, uh, uh, um, approach and, and philosophy um, so that you can build the power of what it really exists. Mm -hmm. 
um, I, I know that you've done considerable research in this area of of the different sort of coaching uh, um, uh, segments, I should say. And um, uh, in terms of, uh, and I don't know what experience you have in the Middle East, what, what have you seen in, in your short time here in Kuwait? And I know you've done work around the Gulf uh, over the years as well. What have you seen um, in terms of the niches that are served here and perhaps the niches that we need to be aware of to develop into more? Well, the, we, the, there's, there's starting to be some work or, or the, the typically started from or initiated from overseas around helping entrepreneurs, for example. And, and that's a very big market and growing market. There's a social market. There's people coming out of prison and things like that who can be helped through coaching and mentoring. Um, but the big market, the, the, the one that the, the, the rapidly growing, is the one for high potentials in companies and for chief executives and leaders. Mm -hmm. um, they, 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 they need different, different kinds of coaching and different mentoring and, and or mentoring, um, but, but, but they both have a very strong need for it. So if you're a chief executive, who tells you when you're an idiot? <laughs> yes, you need somebody to challenge your thinking. It, it, it's, it, it's particularly in, in, in the Gulf region and, 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 and uh, most of the Arab world, it's quite difficult for somebody to challenge somebody who's more senior than themselves. Um, and so, they t so people don't very often get that quality of, of reflection and challenge their thinking that comes with really good coaching. Sometimes by having somebody who's from outside the region, you that, that, can, that can be done. Uh, and pe your, your people will accept that challenge, but what has to be grown is, an, in, is a local ability to have that depth of challenge, that depth and rigour of thinking that goes with really effective uh, coaching. Um, uh, I'm just, I'm uh, having you here is great, so I'm just trying to think of some other things that we can, we can work on, but um, in terms of, of uh, we talked about the niche there for business and executives and CEOs, um, and I know that that's an area that, that is growing here in the Middle East, but I, I don't know that, that any of us here yet are, are um, up to the caliber of perhaps some of the coaches that do exist in, in Europe. And in your experience, what are the, if there were two steps that we need to be aware of to take now and to be aware of for the future, what would those two steps be in order that we could raise our game? One of the things is not to overestimate the quality of coaches in, in Europe. There are brilliant coaches in Europe and the, some of the best in, in, in the world. Um, but there is also a lot of not very good coaches. And when we do assessment centers in large employers, we, we typically remove, or they remove, 70% of the coaches they've been using as not up to the task. You know, and that's quite a lot. Um, so the majority of coaches are out, there, out there are probably not necessarily that far away from where coaches in general are here. But I, I think the, the, the main thing to do I, I, is, is to concentrate on, on growing your, your the, getting out of doing me mechanical coaching and getting into doing more instinctive, intuitive coaching. And that takes confidence and practice. Um, but, but, but also going out and just, just absorbing lots of what's happening, lots of different theories, lots of different approaches, and selecting from it and creating your own philosophy of coaching. We find that's an essential waypoint for people who are making the transition to the higher echelons of coaching, if, if you like, that they, 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 they know that there's a lot of things out there, a lot of ways you can approach it, a lot of methodologies, but then eventually they have their own philosophy, they, uh, they have their own understanding of the way that coaching works. And that is a springboard for, for, for what we call the systemic eclectics, the, the, the top level of coaches, the people who are able to transform others, who have great gravitas, who have great authenticity, self-awareness, humility, all those wonderful qualities that make them superb listeners and superb questioners. Uh, I talk about massively difficult questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, the ability of uh, a, a systemic eclectic coach to see through what's happening in, somebo in, in somebody's descriptions of their, their situation and just ask that one penetrating question that makes them think deeply and resonantly. That's what it's all about. Well, I'm going to leave us with that because that's fantastic. Thank you so much for that information. Um, so uh, that's uh, the executive next level. As I say, this is really designed for coaches in the Middle East. And I want to thank David. Uh, I hope you have a safe journey back to the UK. Uh, and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. Thank you.